Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This year's Porty's Garage. And on today's episode, we're gonna be working on this 1999-996. And what are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to put in this PCCM Plus into the stereo, get a little upgrade going. So before we get started, how about we look and see what's inside the box, shall we? Okay, team, here's the, the situation. We've got everything out of the box. I'll just go over high level some of the parts here. So we have, you know, some miscellaneous different connectors here, optical fiber. You have that micro SD adapter. I did not buy the uh, map uh, add-on, so that is not in there. Uh, we've got our microphone in here, our GPS antenna, the most box, um, the little uh, box that will go down under the cubby to allow you to use USB aux or phone. Uh, we've got the mounting hardware here for the bracket. I did buy this from Suncoast Porsche. So in that, they did give me the um, HVAC uh, new uh, bracket uh, for the, um, the outside of it to fit the bottom part because we're gonna move the, the HVAC from the top portion of the center console down to the bottom. I also give you some assorted user guides, but no installation instructions. That is gonna make it fun. And then of course, the coup de gras, the actual radio. So we're gonna go ahead and start uh, pulling some things apart on the inside and then uh, come back to you guys as we do that and uh, kind of go through the process here. All right, guys, one of the things I wanted to point out to you guys, I did go online, did some research on how to install this. Fortunately for me, this is going to be one of the easier installs because I have the most basic uh, car stereo system that Porsche offered. So it's just four speakers, no amplifier, no most, um, no bows, no nothing like that. So there's going to be a lot of steps that I'm going to skip in here that you may need to do on your your vehicle. Now, the other thing I'd say is go online and download the technical, the Porsche technical information bulletin. It's the 9112. Uh, that is uh, for installing the PCCM Plus, as you can see there. I also did get a copy of an older version of this um, on the Suncoast Porsche website. I don't think it's on there anymore. They're pretty much the same. The, the, the later one is a little more detailed. It's got some more information in it. Uh, but for the most part, they're the same. You can see the uh, the um, um, Suncoast was uh, April 20th of 2020, and the Porsche one was April 31st, or sorry, August 31st of 2020. So uh, follow these guides as you go through it. I am definitely not a, a radio installer, uh, nor do I claim to be, but I'm gonna follow the directions and we're gonna work on it. So this is what my car looks like right now. As you can see, just the basic um, Porsche radio, the Becker in there. We'll go ahead and uh, start pulling all this apart so we can start moving everything around. So the one thing I'll say you need to do is you need to move the HVAC. It's going to go from this top position all the way to the bottom. Suncoast does give you a new bracket because it's got to be somewhat rounded there. We'll take this out. I did buy a new bin for this. It'll be... Uh, uh, basically an empty bin that I can put the um, the USB plugs into and then this all up here will be the PCCM. Okay we're in the front of the car here going to disconnect the battery first so all you do is turn these little little knobs here little buttons slide this off then we got our battery here so 10 millimeter on my car could be different on yours just double check Always take the negative off first. There we go, nice and safe. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna to try to do is take out the stereo and I, I put two of the tools in already. They're hard to get out, but they kind of look like this. Um, you can get them online. I'll throw a link in there um, so that you guys can get the tools as well. But you put them in there and it kind of pushes in the, uh, the little springs. Uh, latches and then you can pull the radio out. Now this is coming out a little hard. All right. So there we go. Take that off. One. 
So on, again, low end stereo here, a black and a brown here that we took out. And there's your stereo. You can see right here where these little tabs get pushed in when you put these tools in. That allows you to pull the stereo out. All right, let's take apart some of the trim here. That came out pretty easy. And so did that. All right, I'm gonna try to remember how all these go in there. Yellow, green, magenta, and then the cigarette lighter. Let's see if we can't figure out how to get these babies up. Oh, look, they're even color coded, so no need. Sorry about the elbow in the way. Rocking it back and forth a little bit. Go. This bad boy just pops up. There we go. Got that out. This one is easier. There's only one color. like we got two Phillips screws here and then I'm gonna guess some t20s here so let me go grab some tools and we'll take this out all right guys I got some hand tools here I don't want to try to take this out with uh, the electric Milwaukee so again t20 down here now ironically enough this one up here is a Phillips not sure if somebody put the wrong screw in or not and two Phillips here. Now this is our HVAC unit. Looks like I did not know of these things. It must have uh, slid on here somehow like that as it went in. Did not read of those things. So let's take apart on the back side here. Little, little on top here, a button. And there we go, there's our HVAC unit out. All right, let's see if we can get this baby out here. And there we go. We're definitely gonna have to modify this. This is gonna come out as well as that. And I think even a little bit down in here, so. We'll set that aside for right now. All right, back at this. Before I do anything else, I wanna get these two pieces out so that I can reroute the HVAC uh, plugs there. So let's go ahead and take that out. Anybody who want a cassette holder? Well, I'm gonna have to get the keys to move the gear shifter, so be right back. All right, have the keys now. So let's go ahead and move this shifter. There we go. Got this out. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is run these wires back down through here and back up through here so we can mount the uh, HVAC down here. All right, be right back. Okay, now that we got the, the lower pieces out here, I was trying to fish the wires back through the back here just not happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this center console out to make it easier. So the first thing you do on both sides, I've already done the other side, you take and you pull this off, and then this is also gonna pull off. Ooh, came off a little bit quicker than I thought. Um, yeah, that just pops off. And then there's gonna be four screws. They're gonna be the T20. There's going to be two back here. You can see them now. There's these little orange pieces in here. Two back here and two here. So let's go ahead and take those off.
There, center console out. Now we should be able to route these, these wires down a little bit easier. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie. This was an SOB trying to get this through there. You basically have to come through straight through the back here and just keep working your way down, getting your fingers in behind here and just working each plug through each one. And then because I have the Tiptronic, at least I'm assuming that, it, I've got this wire coming through here as well. Um, so you had to fish it around that. Um, just to make sure that it went through one thing I would say though There is a bolt or a screw that goes through right here and it is sticking out the the back So make sure that your your wires are away from that screw and I may tie wrap this over here Just so it won't slide over and hit that that screw um, It should be fine the way it is right now, but um, just maybe to be a little safe on that So here we go our HVAC lines uh our electrical is, is pulled through the center boy that hopefully was the hardest part of this whole whole build here so all right um let me get the rest of the stuff we'll get to this bottom piece put back in we'll get the hvac set up and everything set there before we start working on the top part okay now that we've got these uh hvac wires ran through the back here. Let's go ahead and put this back on. Okay, now we can plug back in the HVAC. Got these little clips here, kind of gauge in here. Put our little trim piece on. This too uh, came with the Suncoast uh, kit. This is the part number if you're looking for it. It has the uh, curved piece here. There we go. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but this uh, this little thing just kind of just didn't sit right. So I started looking at the old one. It's got these little blue deals on them. I guess you gotta replace it, put it back on there. So we'll take this one off too and put it back on there. There we go. Now it fits nice and tight. Okay guys, we're down here in the workbench and I'm gonna try to get this prepared to accept the radio. Um, I've done some measurements and kind of figured out, done a lot of research online. Um, to kind of tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to take obviously the center part out. Um, I'll probably cut these off as well. Um, I'm going to leave these side pieces here in this bottom piece. I'm going to try to leave this up here. I may have to take a little bit off of these, uh, these holes up here, but I'm trying to leave as much as I can. So the, uh, the case can fit on it. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, it's kind of hard to see, but this little knob here in this is raised up a little bit higher uh, than the rest of this. So I got to get that level down there so that the, the uh, radio doesn't rock back and forth. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get to cutting and I'll put you guys on a time lapse and uh, we'll see how it looks when we get done. All right, let's do a test pit. All right, so after I got done, I did shave these down over here and I did take off the ears off those and then it seems to fit very good. So let me kind of show you. It's, it's a little bit different. I haven't seen anybody show how to put this in, so I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So first, you, you put together your bracket here. So you got the right side, you got the left side, you got your tray on the top and it kind of goes in the back like this. So what you want to do to kind of secure your radio in here is you first put the radio in. And as you can see, this fits really good. Nice and level on the sides, good at the bottom. 
um, really good at the top. And then you want to take, whoops, you want to take this back part here. You'll notice it's got little lips on it on either side. That's what's going to sandwich this between the radio and the bracket that really makes the, the, the hardware mount piece. So let me try to get this on here without throwing the radio through. Takes a little work to get it in there, but there we go. Kind of got it. Once I get the screws in, it'll, it'll tighten up. Then you can see your screws here, and I can't get to this other screw um, with, with this on, or I'd have to drill through it, but it should be good enough with those two. So let's go ahead. Got them in loose. Let's get all this pulled up together. Would help if I had another set of hands. And there you go. Radio's not gonna fall out of your it's there. It's nice and tight, looks good all the way around. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do while I'm down on the workbench is this is the cubby that goes below the stereo. And I'm gonna put the USBs in there. Now I've seen a couple different ways. Some people have done it in the bat wing. If you do that, what I'm hearing is you have to do an extension on this. Um, so I'm just going to do it here. I do not have a glove box, so that is not an option. What I'm going to do, I bought this new. I'm going to put a couple holes up here at the top so I can uh, fish these wires through. And then this rubber mat goes in there and it kind of plugs in there. And I'm thinking with the wires at the top, you're not going to be able to see it if I were to ever take it out. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And there we go. All right, guys, this is how it looks when I'm done. I elected to put it over on the uh, passenger side here. It's double face tape up there. Got the rubber back in. Looks pretty solid. You can see on the back here, got the hole coming through the back and uh, the rubber things secured in there. All right. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up. So as I was looking this over again, I did notice it was a little loose at the top. Um, so what I did is I took that center bracket, I cut off little pieces and I, I used Gorilla Glue and I glued it in here and here just to give this top piece here something to, to rest against so it can smash up against the, uh, the radio. So I'm, I'm still kind of letting it dry, but when it, when it gets done, it's going to go in like this and then it'll sit right against that like that and then sandwich it in with the radio. Um, the other thing you can do if you want to is you can drill a hole through the side and uh, just put a screw through here, uh, machine screw or a, a bolt if you can get a nut back there. And I did also notice that I could get that third uh, screw in. Um, the, the, the one side that I had the issue was with this and this is from the old Becker radio and this was your um, I guess uh, 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 anti-theft device um, the ground goes to that piece there and then this piece right here then uh, hits the Becker radio um, and if it's gone it breaks the uh, the line and then you can't it, it, it tells the car that something's been stolen out of it the radio obviously and then you can't start the car so We'll talk about that when we get upstairs for the wiring. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry up and we'll go back upstairs to the car and finish some of the wiring up there. Okay guys, before we start installing everything, there's a couple more things we need to do. First thing is you wanna take out this uh, metal brace here. This is for the single DIN and these two things uh, will get in the way. So they're T20 screws. I've already taken those T20 screws out. So let me just take this out here and show you guys. Here's the screws. So one of two things you can do here. Um, I've seen some people drill out the rivets. I've seen other people just bend this up. I think I'm just gonna bend it straight up when I put it back in. Uh, that way, um, you know, I don't have to drill those out and maybe it'll give the radio a little more support when it's back there. All right, that said, let me set that down. Next thing I wanna do is our GPS. So 
Since I didn't get the map program, I probably don't need this, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it anyway, just so if I decide to buy the map program down the road, um, I, can, I can use that. Because most likely I'm gonna use Waze on this and then I'll be using my phone's GPS. But let's, uh, let's talk about where you can put this. I've seen it in a couple different spots. So one, you can put it right on top of this vent right here, your vent that comes out there. Uh, two, I've seen it up under the hood, not actually under the hood, but under the plastic between the hood and the windshield wipers. You can route uh, the wire through here. It goes through a uh, grommet on the driver's side. Um, and then you can run the cable over and then put it up somewhere up in there. What I'm gonna try to do here, um, I saw this and I, I really like this the best, is um, I'm going to try to pop the alarm cover off. There's a little spot up here and if this will fit um, up in here, I think it will, uh, I'm gonna mount it there and then run the wire. It'll come, you can, you can see it, it comes right through here, right on top of this and right into the uh, uh, radio cavity. So let's see if we can pop this baby off here. Hopefully not too hard. Okay, that was kind of easy. And I heard you, you pop it up from the back here and then you slide it forward. Because it has a couple little clips right in here that, um, that you'll need to make sure you don't break off. So let's set that aside so I'm going to break it off. Let's see how this baby's going to fit up here. Will it fit? I think it will. That is going to work really good. And then we'll route the wire through here and down through the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. And we'll be right back. Okay, so I did this off camera, but I did get the GPS unit up here right next to the um, alarm system. So to do that, what I, what I had to do is take out two T20 screws uh, for the alarm system here. And it does not move out until you pull up one of these, uh, either side really, of your dash vent. Now, um, I did pull it up and I did not take it completely out because to take it completely out, you have to take out the A pillar but I, I was able to, it just snapped in, just pull it up. It gave me enough room to manipulate this. I got the wire fed through underneath the alarm unit and it comes on top of the, um, the vent here. And then this is all my uh, cable for the GPS. Now I did read um, and was told that you should not have your GPS cord spooled up in a circle. You should have it longwise like this. Um, the main reason is because if, if it's in a circle, it's continually cycling, I guess, and in this way it's going back and forth. Um, I'm just going to trust that that's the right way to do it. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to fit a lot nicer right up underneath here, which we'll put it up there right now. This is really just going above the vent. Um, between the vent and the dashboard. There's a little bit of space there. So we'll put that there. And now we have our GPS cord here. Now, one thing that I've been having a problem with is getting this back on and have it to fit flat. Because the GPS unit or the antenna is a little bit fatter, I'm gonna go ahead and grind these down just a little bit here so it'll fit down tight. I could get it on and it would snap in place but it just was lifting up just a little bit. And I think it's hitting these right here is right across this, um, this bend here. Um, it's hitting. So I'm going to, I'm going to sand that down a little bit with the Dremel, uh, to give me just a little bit more clearance as I put that on. But before we do that, one of the things I had mentioned before with this brace, um, these, these used to <laughs> go flat like that for the single din. And I did, uh, bend it up. Uh, this one, when I bend it up, it broke off. But I'm going to go ahead and put this back in now. Again, two of your uh, T20 um, uh, Torx bits. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that in before we forget and get halfway through the install with everything in there. 
And you can't put this in backwards because it's got a uh, alignment peg there. All right, that back in. Let's uh, let's go ahead and um, I'll I'll grind this down, and then I'll come back after we get it back put put back on. Okay, we got this uh, ground down a little bit and put in there. It's sitting a little bit better than it was. I'm not absolutely happy with it yet, so I may play with that a little bit more. But uh, getting back to the installation, there's one more big thing I need to do, and that is the external microphone. So if you guys didn't know already, maybe many of you do, this little spot here to the uh, other side of the, the gauge cluster here is actually a speaker um, internal for, you know, if you got the right uh, um, stereo system and whatnot. This will be a speaker hole here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top uh, gauge cluster piece off. I'm going to run the speaker into this and then I'm going to run the wire back here. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take off this top gauge cluster. I have this pick tool that I kind of use in here. Be very careful because, as you know, these cars are a little bit older and uh, um, they, they tend to break easily. Plastics. Okay, that was pretty easy. I, I had it out before. That's probably why. But this is your speaker holder. And uh, I'm going to try to put it in there. Seen a couple videos on this. You kind of got to take apart the actual external speaker to get it to fit in there but I'll try a few things. We'll take this over to the bench and see what we can do there. But let's uh, go ahead and take the rest of this off. This is gonna take the whole button out. So don't freak out when that comes out. But this is going to give us access to the T20 Torx here and a T20 Torx here. The only two screws holding this gauge cluster on and then you gotta kinda pop it up. Might want to have a magnet handy. Now, if you really want to take this gauge cluster out, you have to uh, take this out. There's two two pins here, and it'll slide back for you, as well as the um, the actual connections to the to the gauges. The best way to do that is lean it forward and work from uh, outside the windshield so you can see it. Very easy plugs. It's just uh, a pull up the tab and it slides right out. I'm not going to go through all that because all I'm doing is going to run the uh, the uh, wire through there. So with that, we can kind of see I'm going to kind of run it right up there, across here, through this hole, and come out by the vent again, just like we have the GPS. So with that, um, and you can kind of see the clip here, one clip there, there's a clip here and then one clip over here so that just pulls straight up all right with that let's take this down see if we can get the microphone fitted in here and then we will run the wire okay guys back down in the bench let's go ahead and open up this microphone here so this is our external microphone that we're going to try to get in here as you can see this is a little bit bigger I mean, I could jam it in there and, and have it sit like that, but uh, I think we can do a little bit better. So let me go ahead and uh, there's one screw right down here at the bottom uh, that holds that top part on. Let me take that off. Okay, now we get this. This is the internals of the, uh, the microphone. I kind of like how it's set like that and it's not going to move around. Um, I did see where uh, another person took all of this out and just kind of stuffed it in there. But I'm going to see if I can just get that to kind of wedge in there a little bit. Um, something like that. Um, I think if I take off this double face tape here, it might give me a little bit more room. But see if we can't uh, wedge that in there a little bit. Yeah, guys, I think this is my route, and this is how I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to wedge it in there. It'll be easy to take out. Um, I think there's enough friction in there. It's not going to pop out. And, you know, if it does, I can always pop this off again and, uh, and put it in there. Maybe put some uh, glue on it or something like that. But I think that's, I mean, it's not falling out. So let's go ahead and go with that. And, um... 
let's go back up to the car and get this line run okay guys i actually did decide to take off the gauge cluster it was just too much of a pain in the butt trying to get that routed through um the the little hole back here and in and whatnot so basically what i got i got the uh um the microphone put in here now so i'll go ahead and, and punch that in it comes through the back here and uh i don't know if you can see this or not probably not but i'll try to point it out it basically comes through here i've got the wire routed around here just right on top of the gauge cluster nice little pinch right here so that it kind of stays in and then i'm gonna have it come out here it goes in um to the uh, radio area right here. This is your um, your hazard switch that I pulled out um, and then comes back in here. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, where's it? Right here, that. And then I'll, I'll clean up these wires so there's not a bunch hanging out there. But I think I left enough um, uh, excess by the microphone so I can take that off without having to rip all that out. Um, and we'll, we'll get a, enough access here. But now you can kind of see a little bit more of what you need to do to take out the, uh, the gauge cluster. So these are the clips. There's, there's three of them in the back. And basically what it is is these, these little clips here slide back and forth. Um, there's, a, there's a little pin on the back. You just hold it down, and then this slides over that. And, um, and then once you get it all the way to the bottom, it just pops right out pretty easy this uh, a little bit different um, so the plug here <clears throat> plugs into this and uh, what you need to do on the underside of this is get a little screwdriver in here and uh, move that up make sure you pinch these so it will come out um, uh, of the dash here so pinch that get those loosened and pulled out a little bit get a little screwdriver in here just easily you know force it out uh, wedge it out and then on the bottom here, all there is is this little pin right here. You just move that over a little bit and this thing drops right out. So really, really super easy. So that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff back together. You guys don't need to see that. And uh, we'll be back to kind of start buttoning all this up. Okay, we are finally ready to put this puppy in. So before we do that, there's a couple things I wanted to cover. One, I wanted to cover some of the stuff that I am not installing because my system doesn't use it. So first and foremost um, is the most box. Um, this is that, this is the cable that goes into that. So um, since my, my um, car does not have that, I'm not installing it. This would be your most cable. Um, coming in you, you take off this little it's fiber optic so you don't want to get that clean or dirty um, but this just kind of mounts in here on this tray just like that um, you know you'd put some double face tape on it and then this plugs in down here um, to this very bottom white white one let me lift this up so this very bottom white one is where your most hooks up and then again obviously you'd have a cord in here fiber optic you put that in speaking of fiber optic if you do have that you have to complete the loop on the other side so if your cd players in the trunk or the frunk as they say you would unconnect the fiber optic there and put this on there for the loop again don't have most uh, so we're not using that this cable here is for your Sirius XM. I'm not installing that, so we won't be using this cable as well. Um, they also give you an additional ground. So again, if you have the most system, this is the part number for the ground. Comes in the, the Suncoast uh, uh, kit, but uh, if you do have that, you have to pull a pin out or splice this in. Put another ground in, um, in the front are in the frunk there with your CD changer. So that's kind of all the stuff that, uh, that I have that, um, that I am uh, not putting in. The, the only other cable that I haven't connected up here yet is the antenna adapter. So I'll go ahead and put that on now. Make sure I don't. There we go. So we got that. Um, last thing um, in pretty much all the cars and we talked about this with that uh, this um, piece here 
as well as the um, the uh, mounting shroud here. Uh, this is your basically cable that says, hey, something's been stolen. So if you break that contact, they say, uh, I've seen this a couple different ways, so we're gonna try it the way it says in the, in the Porsche directions. They say just to tape this off, it's pretty well insulated already, so I don't think we're gonna have any problems. But we'll go ahead and tape this off just so we don't have any problems and kind of stick it back here. Um, so now we're kind of ready to start uh, putting everything together. Um, let's see how this goes. I'm really nervous, guys. I, I gotta be honest. Oh, one other thing um, I didn't show off camera. I did put the uh, console in here with the USB and the phone and the aux. Um, just had to take out the side panel to run the, run the wires up here. There's not a lot of play in these. So I'm going to have to get this pretty darn close to, uh, to get everything set up. So I apologize if you can't see me hooking everything up. Um, also on mine, uh, since it is the basic, I just have two plugs that go in. Um, those plugs will go over here on this side. So the black will go here, uh, the brown there. If you do have the yellow cord, it would go in there. All right. Uh, this is going to be your uh, GPS. This is your antenna. Uh, again, the most... Um, these two, sorry, these two here are for the, uh, aux USB. And then, uh, and then you got this one for the microphone. This one is not used on the 996. Um, from what I read on the 997, that is your backup camera. So any of you guys out there, um, really ingenious, uh, can figure out how to use the backup camera. All right, let's start the hookup. Okay, I'm gonna leave it just like this for a second. I'm gonna hook up the battery and see how everything looks together. Okay guys, I had a problem <laughs> getting everything connected. So with this box here, the aux box, I had it uh, uh, basically glued up with using these little glue strips um, and it wouldn't move. Um, so what I suggest is using the uh, Velcro that comes with the kit on the box. Um, that way you can move the, the cord back a little bit further. It is so very close to not being long enough for that. Um, if I had a glove box, it'd probably be better to put it in the glove box uh, a little bit shorter run. With that said, we've got everything plugged in. I'm not plugging all this in yet, just to give everything. I've got this kind of pushed in place. Have not screwed it in yet. <sighs> got the keys. Let's see what we got here. Come on, please be power. Oh, got windshield wipers going. Good first sign. Turn that. that looks beautiful, I gotta say. Who knows what he's got in store? I just cannot wait. On the way of the weekend, Jack Harlow, also Rihanna on WIOG. Turn off your screens. Turn off your radio. Well, I will say this, guys. It is way, way louder than the stock Becker. Um, everything looks to be working all right here. I'll go through some other tests, <clears throat> plug in the phone, make sure all that works but I'm gonna call this a success for right now. Um, thank you guys for, for checking this out. Make sure you hit like and subscribe below. It helps me out. Um, and if there's any comments you think I should have done something different or um, maybe some different ideas on things, definitely comment below. Thank you guys for all the support. See you around.